Hey y'all, I'm Lee Bratcher. I'm the president of the Texas Blockchain Council. I had the chance a few days ago to sit down with Texas Governor Greg Abbott to talk about how Texas is becoming the jurisdiction of choice for Bitcoin and blockchain, and specifically for Bitcoin mining. If you want to learn more about the TBC and what we do, check us out online at texasblockchaincouncil.org and follow us on social media. Hope you enjoy the interview. Well, Governor, thanks for being here today. It's I'm a excited pleasure. to have this conversation with you. You have been making Texas a world leader in a lot of industries, and we can now add Bitcoin and blockchain uh, to that long list. So uh, we want to ask you, what has Texas been doing to generate that kind of momentum to create tech, to, to make Texas a leader in these industries? So in a way, this is just uh, stereotypical Texas. Texas, uh, we have a yearning to be number one in everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we, we, over the past few decades, we've been uh, growing dramatically with regard to tech in general. Uh, and, and now Texas has been the leader, uh, both in tech as well as innovation. Texas has been the leading exporter, for example, of technology for nine years in a row. Uh, and this is the latest iteration of technology in a way, the, the latest iter iteration of, of innovation. And, and we all know we're in like the uh, top half of the first inning of, of this. And so Texas is getting in involved uh, early on in this process because we see the, the future of what uh, Bitcoin, of what blockchain means uh, to the, the entire world. Texas wants to be the centerpiece of that. Uh, and so we, we are promoting it, we are advancing it, uh, but I would say we're providing the platform uh, for, for those who are involved in blockchain, for those who are involved in uh, Bitcoin, uh, to, to make sure that they're going to have a, a location they can come to uh, that does not have the sense of friction that comes along with high regulation. Mm -hmm. So that makes the ease of business far better uh, and it promotes that innovation. So uh, we will continue advancing uh, opportunities for businesses and sectors like this because Texas, again, our mantra is we want to be the home of innovation and Bitcoin and blockchain uh, is the cutting edge of innovation in the world right now. Absolutely. And the ethos of Texas, you know, one of independent thinking and a can-do attitude aligns really well with the spirit of Bitcoin. So tell us a little bit more about what you have been doing to make Texas Bitcoin country. Well, in, in addition to uh, making it open and, and inviting for people here, we actually, this past session, we passed some laws to make it uh, far better. We, we created uh, a working group to make sure that uh, we're going to be focused on uh, the type of legislation that will make it more inviting. Understand this, and that is when, when Texas engages in legislation, we, we don't want to be over-regulatory. We, we're kind of anti-regulation, but we want to provide an infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, to make sure uh, that, that blockchain and, and Bitcoin will be able to uh, succeed is, is the kind of reaction that some people saw happen uh, earlier this week when, when uh, the president uh, came out and said they wanted to provide some regulatory framework that was a positive uh, because it didn't look like it was going to be uh, over uh, onerous and regulatory. We want to do the same thing. We, we want to make sure that uh, there are some, some guidelines that are going to be assistive to it. Uh, but also, listen, we, we uh, are looking forward uh, into things like uh, virtual money uh, and virtual currency uh, and uh, in whatever form that may take. We, we know that the world is in a situation of transition right now. Uh, as it concerns things like uh, money, currency, banking, uh, and, and finance, uh, and that blockchain and Bitcoin uh, are uh, in the vanguard of that. And so we want to create a framework that will allow all of that to excel here. I love it. So Governor, um, the demand response program and the world leading Texas energy industry, what have you seen the Bitcoin mining industry been able to do when they come in and they partner with oil and gas, they partner with you know, executives at ERCOT and the demand response uh, capabilities of curtailing that load. How, what, how has that benefited Texas and the grid? Mm -hmm. So first, you mentioned demand response, which is kind of a sophisticated knowledge about the way this whole process works that your viewers may not know uh, what you're talking about. Let me explain to that and plug it into uh, what's you, going on in the grid. When, when you refer to demand response, generally speaking, what that refers to is that in Texas, for your viewers who may not know, uh, we have an open independent power grid. Um, most states, if not all states, have uh, a heavy regulated uh, power structure, so they have a, a kind of a singular utility program in their state. Texas doesn't have that. We have a, a free market system 
uh, in the state of Texas, uh, where people get to go purchase power uh, from the lowest power provider, the lowest cost power provider. And now w when we do that, uh, uh, what, what happens is that there can be so much demand for power uh, at, at times of uh, high need for power, such as in a, a heavy winter storm, uh, there needs to be a demand response so that people who don't really need power uh, for a few hours or a, a day or so, uh, they, they can ratchet back on the, their power demand. So that's the demand response so that uh, Bitcoin, uh, uh, th those who make Bitcoin or Ethereum, whatever the case may be, uh, listen, a, 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 a few hours of lost power uh, is, is not going to destroy their business, whereas it, it could with a hospital or something like that. So here's, here's the way that it works, and that is with all of, of the Bitcoin miners and Ethereum miners, et cetera, in the state of Texas, it is good for our power grid system in this sense, and that is it creates more demand on an ongoing basis, and uh, that provides the investment incentive uh, for power generators to come invest more to create more power in the state of Texas uh, while working at the same time where there are, uh, the Bitcoin miners are able to, to ratchet back if there is a need uh, for surplus power uh, to keep essential services online. And so it works hand in hand. It's, it's, it's great for the Bitcoin miners mm -hmm. to have, have access to, uh, if not the lowest cost, one of the lowest cost uh, of power in, in the entire world, right. uh, while at the same time being able to uh, generate even more power generation that will lower the cost even more. Absolutely. And when we had that increased generation, that increased base load, and the, the peaks are getting shaved off the demand, you know, off of the duck curve, that can only be beneficial for Texas power prices. Consumers right, will, right. because of that increased supply, have lower power prices. You're exactly right. And so, so what uh, Bitcoin miners are doing, uh, be, be, because they are uh, increasing the amount of power that's supplied here, uh, the cost of that power is going down. And so the Bitcoin miners are going to benefit from that, which is one reason why we have so many of them here, because the cost of power is so low. Uh, but their participation in the market will drive those uh, energy prices down even more, which is going to be good for Bitcoin miners, but good for everybody in the state of Texas. Absolutely. So when we think about the future of the state of Texas and entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, uh, and, and private equity moving to Texas because of this climate, uh, that we have this innovative climate from the East Coast, from the West Coast. Do you see that trend continuing? And if so, um, how is California going to have any entrepreneurs left in five years? They're all going to be here in, in Austin. Yeah. So uh, listen, someone's going to be the last person to turn out the lights in California because it's <laughs> moving very rapidly here. To, to give you an example, uh, over this over last year, 2021. Uh, the, first, the context: Texas has, for the past decade or so has been number one in the United States for the most new economic development projects. And Texas receives the, the annual award uh, that goes to states for having the most economic development projects. Last year was the most prolific year we ever had, uh, especially as it concerned headquarter moves. It takes a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort for a company to actually move its headquarters. Uh, last year we doubled the second best year that we've ever had in the number of headquarters actually moving to Texas and most of those headquarter moves uh, were businesses uh, that are, are on the cutting edge of innovation. Easy example would be Tesla moving its headquarters mm -hmm. here. Uh, but there's so many more like that. So we, we continue to promote an environment uh, that attracts innovators and entrepreneurs. If you, if you go back historically, Texas was an entrepreneurial state to begin with when you had entrepreneurs from other states coming here to uh, found and begin the state of Texas. And so from our very founding until today, uh, we have created an environment uh, that's pro-entrepreneur that is accelerating uh, because in some other states like California, for example, you know, entrepreneurs, uh, they're in it for their ability to generate new innovations, but also they, they want to make money off of it. Uh, and when you're being taxed so extraordinarily high uh, in a state like California, you're not able to take home uh, as, as much of the money as you were making. Same for your employees. Your, your ability to hire employees and staff, et cetera, uh, is tied in part to the tax system. But maybe even more than that, the regulatory system. When, when, when you Look at the regulatory system in some other states. Mm -hmm. It's so onerous. Uh, time is money. Mm -hmm. uh, and Texas has the capability of moving at the speed of business. One quick example in that regard, going back to Tesla. 
Elon wanted to create a massive gigafactory. Right. Uh, and he knew that it would take, you know, five to 10 years to be able to do that in California. Uh, he was able to, from the process of just having flat ground, uh, grade it and, and build it, uh, build it more than a mile long gigafactory in only 18 months in the state wow. of Texas. It's our ability to cut through regulations to get businesses to come here uh, and stay here and grow here. Last thing I'll add is this, and that is the Texas approach is different than other states approach in, in one meaningful regard. And that is we partner with these businesses that are coming here. Uh, they're, they're, to use California as a model, California leeches off of the businesses that are there. Uh, they try to get money from them to pay for their programs, et cetera. Uh, we're, we're not here to leech off a of business. We're here to help a business succeed because we know that when businesses come here and succeed, the state will succeed. And so we will continue to partner with those businesses, assist those businesses uh, in, in growing. Uh, and that is why we're seeing so many businesses and people choose to come to Texas. Governor, thank you for being the champion for innovation, for Bitcoin, for Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, Governor Greg Abbott, the champion of innovation and Bitcoin.